On this steamy September night in 2050, shower and thunderstorm activity is offshore here on our live first alert Doppler radar. And of course, way offshore, we have Hurricane Kyle. And now Kyle is expected to miss South Florida, thankfully, as it heads offshore the Bahamas and further north across the waters of the Atlantic, offshore the Carolinas, as a matter of fact, as it loses strength and eventually is expected to move on towards the northeast and become just a remnant tropical storm. So for us, no direct impact. But folks, this time, uh, these days, as you know, we tend to have big time problems with the flooding, no matter how far away this hurricane is offshore. There you see Kyle with its well-defined eye north of the Bahamas. Uh, you see some of the shower and thunderstorm activity that affected us away from Kyle today. But even though the core of the system is going to remain this far offshore, here's our problem. We have the onshore winds produced by the distant hurricane and just the onshore winds is sufficient to produce, well, the flooding that we're seeing, the tidal flood along Miami Beach, again, submerging a good portion of the city, three, four feet of water once more as we have this distant hurricane producing uh, these conditions. Of course, exacerbated by climate change and sea level rise that we're seeing already mid-century here. And this is, of course, expected to worsen. Now, if you've been alternating between the Weather Channel and us, you know you've seen Jim Cantori live out there, uh, ankle deep in the water, knee deep in some locations uh, because of this problem. Meanwhile, we're just getting through our big time deluge that we had uh, earlier this week. 17 inches of rain in six hours. Well, the National Weather Service has deemed this a one in 100 year event, but well, how many of these have we seen in the last uh, 10 or 20 years? They seem to come not one in 100 years. They seem to come once every three or four years. Just extreme, extreme rainfall events quite frequently here uh, mid-century. And, of course, you'd expect that to occur with a warmer environment. Right now, it's quite hot outside yet again. 96 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, 95 in Marathon. I remember earlier this century where our normal highs this time of the year were close to 90. Now we're getting close to 95 degrees and as a matter of fact the number of days above 95 degrees as we get uh, uh, within the next 10 years or so are, is expected to exceed 18 days per year and by the end of the century if we continue with our emissions trend injecting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere with without diminishing them in any way we're going to end up with 86 95 degree days a year here in Miami as opposed to what used to occur uh, this time during the first half of the century. All right, here is your first alert forecast now as we head into the weekend. Again, Kyle is moving away. Big time problem with the flooding on Miami Beach and other coastal locations in South Florida. But as far as shower and thunderstorm activity, it is expected to decrease. Meanwhile, our temperatures are expected to rise even further. We were in the mid 90s today. We'll be in the upper 90s by the end of the weekend. Of course, we don't get much relief at night. Our nighttime lows will be 84, 85 degrees, pretty brutal, pretty steamy here in South Florida. Climate change is affecting the weather everywhere. It makes it more extreme and disturbs established patterns. That means more disasters, more uncertainty. We can reduce the risk by cutting global greenhouse gas emissions and building low carbon economies. Let's work together to make our societies safer and more resilient. Please join me in taking action on climate change. Thank you.